Do you want to make video games, but you don't think that you can do it? I promise you that you can. All it takes is the willingness to put in the work, learn the things you need to learn, and go for it. You don't need to go to school. You don't need to have great technology from the start. You just have to be willing to do whatever it takes to keep pushing forward. So here's the story of how I went from a kid who had given up on his dream of making games to someone who gets to do that every single day. And along the way, I'll give you some tips and teach you how not to make the mistakes that I made. Growing up, I always wanted to make video games. I always thought that it would be the most fun career you could ever have, but I also didn't think that it was something I'd be able to do. I'd play these things that meant so much to me, and just trying to comprehend the idea that I could make this was hard to accept. As a kid, I remember playing video games and then drawing little monsters that I'd show my parents and talk about how I would put them into a game. But that was it. I didn't really have an outlet for that for years until I started playing Little Big Planet, which let you make your own levels. And even though it wasn't actually making games, it was a slice of everything that I'd always wanted, which was to be a game developer. But by the time I graduated high school, I didn't think that it was something I'd be able to do. So I kind of gave up on my dream. Sure, I did art. Sure, I loved playing video games, but I didn't think I would actually ever be able to make them. This all changed for me in March of 2018 when a few of my friends went and saw Ready Player One and they came to me afterward and said, hey, we should make video games together. And I said, no, I don't think we could do that. But honestly, I just didn't know how possible it really is to make video games if you're willing to put in the work. So we started figuring out how we were gonna do this. I would handle the art, my other friend would handle the programming, my other friend would help with the design ideas. And we just started learning. I started learning Blender. Now, at this point, I didn't even have a computer. I had a super crappy little laptop that I was gonna try and do everything on. This was the type of laptop, for reference, that would crash if you tried to watch a video at over 720p. And I was gonna try to learn how to 3D model with it. So, almost immediately, I downloaded Blender, which is a free 3D modeling software, and I just started following a tutorial. Now, my laptop couldn't handle running Blender and running YouTube at the same time. So night after night for weeks, I would pull up my chair in front of the television, sit my laptop on my lap, grab a little notebook and a pen, and sit there and watch a few seconds of a tutorial, stop, take notes on the shortcut keys, the process I was following, tips that he would give, try to replicate things on my laptop, watch more of the tutorial. And yes, it was a lot of work. It felt like I was back in school, but at the same time, it also felt good because I was making progress on something that I knew could be a big part of my life if I just put in the work to do it right. And I got all the basics of this by following the Blender Guru donut tutorial. And even though I was working on that five years ago at this point and there are new versions of Blender out, there are also new versions of the donut tutorial using the new versions of Blender, still by Blender Guru. So if you're interested in making games and you're more predisposed to the art side of things, just download Blender on whatever you have and figure out how to get through this tutorial. I promise you it's the best way to get started, at least if you think artistically like I do. So after I was comfortable with the basics, I started experimenting with some of the things that we had talked about for our game idea. I started simple by making a little shark grenade based off an idea that we had discussed for the game and worked from there. And after that was done, I made the first character for our game, who was like a little sheriff, marshal, dwarf type thing who I named Marshall. And of course, Marshall had to have a gun, so I made him a very crude little gun and I was happy with the progress I was making. It wasn't perfect, but given what I was working with and the fact that I never thought I'd make games, I was ecstatic. And probably because I was just so excited to be making progress, I ignored a lot of the problems that we were encountering, or more realistically, problems we were creating for ourselves. We started out by coming up with the idea for the first game we were gonna make, which was absolutely unrealistic for three people to make. And on top of that, we also spent way too much time trying to figure out what the name of our game studio should be called. When at this point, we couldn't even make games, we were still learning the basics. And when the time came to actually start making the game, one of our friends actually stepped away from the project, leaving just me and the person who was working on the coding. And that's not to say this third friend was a bad person or lazy or uncommitted. He wasn't. He was none of those things. It's just that it's easy to get caught up in the excitement of what you're doing and not practically think about what it's going to take to make it happen. You're not in this to make a game studio, you're in this to make games. So that's where you should start. So remember how I said that our game idea was completely unachievable? That's because our idea was to make a MMO, the absolute worst idea, do not do this if you're planning on making games, 
please don't do this. It's a horrible idea, and we obviously had to accept that this was completely unachievable and move on to a smaller idea. And I pitched the idea for Toby's Topsy Tale, based on a graphic novel idea I had had in the past, where you play as a little gingerbread man and you explore a hub world house and try to find out the secrets of who made you and where you come from and why you exist. And we started working on that. My friend who was working on the programming had been working in Unreal, teaching himself how to use the system. And while he was doing that, I started working on the concept art for the game idea that we had. And once I had a general idea, I modeled the first asset that he would be able to use, which was the fridge, and I sent that over to him. And he used the stock assets to get in and just kind of move around, and this was exciting, seeing something I had made in a game world. And it did not matter at all that it was just a fridge, because it was my fridge. I made that. And so I modeled out the entire kitchen, and then sent him pieces for that. I also sent him a model of one of the first characters that I made for the game, which was Carter, who was based off a carton of milk. And he put that into Unreal and started playing around with that. And that was another moment of excitement, seeing a character that I'd made actually moving around and being able to be played with. The only downside is that with the system that we were using of me making things and sending them to him and then him incorporating them into game files, I never actually got to play any of these things that he was making. So it was exciting, but it was also hard to not be as involved as I would like. So now at this point we also hit another roadblock, because my partner did not like the way that Unreal worked with its visual coding, and he wanted to switch to Unity. And I didn't have a problem with this, because I liked Unity, and it also had a lot more tutorials and community input that you could get access to. And so I was on board, but this also meant that he had to learn an entire new programming language, which set us back quite a bit. But I trusted him, and I gave him the space, and I let him do what he needed to do. And then eventually, when I had a rough version of Toby done, I sent it to my partner, and he put it into Unity and was able to play around with him a little bit. And we were back on track. We were making progress. I kept making characters, berry, broccoli, working on things that hopefully he'd be able to integrate into the game. This whole time, I was still working with my crappy old laptop trying to do all of this. And trying to make levels in Unity was almost impossible because it, it, you could barely go two minutes without the entire thing crashing, so I had to save constantly. And the goal was to make an entire level and send it to him so that he could just pop the things he'd been making into it. But in the meantime, I just sent him all of the assets for the kitchen and let him make that first level himself. And because of how desperately I needed a new computer, if we were going to keep making progress, I suggested that we do a Kickstarter. Not for a large amount of money, just for about $1,500. Which was just enough to split the money, him to get upgrades for his computer, me to get a new computer, and then we could really get going, and we could make this game work, and hopefully we could build a community around this game. And so I made the Kickstarter, and it did really well. Kickstarter actually recommended it, and we passed our goal by almost 30%, over $2,000. So we split the money, got the things that we needed to get, and got to work. I started finally being able to make levels, I started working in Unity, creating things, learning how the systems worked without having to constantly restart, and I really, really got going on that. I started making levels, making a lot of progress, it was very exciting. And while I was working on the art side of things and really honing that part of my craft, my partner was working on the programming side, and he was making progress. I was able to send him a full version of the entire hub world area, with the hallway and the living room and everything attached, so he could work in the actual space. I also sent him a new enemy, Barry, which he was able to incorporate, and we had a very playable, basic version of the game, and I was excited. And I sent him the pantry level for him to do the same thing with. And at a certain point, he didn't like how the game was going. He was having issues with the programming. So he suggested that we take a little break and we make a new project, which I wasn't fully on board with, but if he thought that would help him, I was willing to give it a shot. So I took this little sketch that I'd made of this, like, I called it a dream night, and he started playing around in this new game file that we made as the dream night, making it move. And it was fun. It was a nice little step away project to just kind of practice because we had kind of leapt head first into this big project. And so having finished that, I was excited to get back to Toby's Topsy Tale, the game we were supposed to be making. Except I don't think my partner ever really went back to the other project. That's not to say he never opened it, he never worked on it. It's just to say that he never fully committed to actually getting this game done. I'd say that's one of the biggest problems that I see with people who get into indie game development. They work on a project for a while, they're very excited, and then they start getting into the drudgery of every day making this game happen. And then one day a new idea comes to them and they get excited and they want to work on that and then they leave the old game behind. And this process will kill your ability to make games. And I think to some degree that affected my partner. 
I also really think that he got caught in another loop that some indie game developers get caught in, which is trying to redo the things you've already done over and over and over again because they don't feel perfect. And again, it wasn't because he was lazy, I think it was because he was a perfectionist. And while I was chugging away making level after level, the yarn level, the freezer level, he was making almost no further progress because he kept trying to fix the issues that he had with the way things were working. But realistically, it just meant that I never actually had a playable version of the character. And it also meant that we were never making forward progress on the programming side. And I hope it doesn't come off as if I seemed like I was doing everything right and my partner was doing everything wrong, because that wasn't the situation. There was a lot of gray area, it's difficult to work with friends, and we both did a lot wrong, but ultimately, it came down to the point where we could not work together, for a lot of reasons. I'd say I learned two things from this. First of all, be very careful when you're choosing a partner to work with, especially if you're going to do things that involve money, such as a Kickstarter. Sometimes, it's better to work alone. The other thing I learned, which is a positive, is that because I had spent so much time learning the art side of things without ever touching the coding, I was incredibly comfortable with that entire aspect of game development. So moving forward, I could just focus on learning the programming and everything else came a little more natural. And so that's something else I'd recommend as a tip. Get really good at one thing before you move on to the other thing. Because if you try to jump around too much, you're just gonna get overwhelmed. So now I was in a position where I either had to learn coding or admit that this game was not gonna get done. But then I found a workaround, courtesy of someone who is an incredible game developer who made the first tree. And he used Playmaker to create this game. And Playmaker is a visual coding software. It's sort of similar to the visual coding software that Unreal uses. So it's very similar to actual coding, but it's visual. And I could get my mind around that. So this is about where my devlog started. If you haven't seen any of those, after this video, you can click the link, watch through those. It takes you through the entire process of me starting out, learning Playmaker, and slowly working my way up to the point where now I just make indie games. I know how to do the different things. And that's not to say I'm not continuously learning, but I now know that I have the skills to do everything that I need to do. I didn't go to school. I didn't learn formal coding but I'm making indie games and I don't feel like I'm compromising at all. So if you're watching this video and you've ever thought, I wanna make video games, but I don't think I can, I promise you that you can. Start simple, either learn Blender following tutorials and then work your way into level design in Unity or learn coding or download Playmaker and learn that side of things. You can make games, but it is gonna take a lot of work that being said, I have a Discord where I am more than happy to talk to you at any point about the process of making games. Link will be in the description to join that. Also, I'm going to keep making videos, ideally talking about the process that I use to go through and make games. It's not always going to be perfect, it's not going to be what you'd recommend, but hopefully it will teach you some basic things you can use to start making games. So like and subscribe to stay up to date with that. I didn't think I could make games, you might not think that you could make games, but you can, and I am here to help you and I'm so excited to see what you make. Thank you for watching.